Welcome back to Disco, guys. So last time we learned all about the pale, um, which is beyond fascinating, really. Um, very otherworldly, I guess. Um, and we split the drugs with Kuno. We pinched the boots and cleaned them off as well. I still have no idea how to get up here. Um, but yeah. Fascinating. So uh, it's still early morning um, and I thought it might be nice to open up with um, doing uh, doing some more, you know, do another interact with our ledger because we have a lot of it's cases. It's the ledger you found in the trash. A cabbage of papers hanging from the board with arson, yep. petty theft, spousal abuse, handwritten logs on dozens of investigations date back to January 51. Yep. Naming yes, convention. It appears you employ a Shall we say, yes, all caps. One is called, the others appear more light-hearted. But it's going to take an effort to piece these cases. You don't oh. exactly close them. So much as oh, sorry. distance yourself from the I meant it read takes a case about half an hour to piece one together. Using the system you've devised. Which one do you want? The square bullet hole murders. It would be very interesting to read about these, wouldn't it? I mean... There seems to be a square-shaped entry wound in the victim's forehead. She's been sitting there for weeks, on her rocking chair, with a square hole in her skull, staring at the wall, her mouth agape. But... That's all you got. From the half hour you spent piecing it together, all you know is the entry wound was square-shaped. You never found the bullet. And then another body showed up, also with a square hole in his forehead. A sequence killer. Who knows? Those pages are missing. What next? Don't worry. One day. Hmm. So two people with a square hole in their head. Fascinating. The couch in an unexpected location. Some assholes brought their couch outside and hung out on it. In the middle of the street, on the roof, on the hillside by the motorway. You know, at an unexpected location. They were young, and they thought they looked cool on it. They actually look like arseholes. They look really cool like models. They looked really cool like a rock band. <laughs> or the cast of Friends, right? That's what the intro to Friends has, right? Couch in front of a fountain, right? I'm sure they I'm sure they, they looks good in their own way. Yes. As you said here, total assholes. Young people are the worst. That is so true. Anyway, you got a complaint about the damn sofa or couch or whatever it was. They were leaving it out in all these unexpected and whimsical locations. They took it to where they also took photos of themselves on it and smoked cigarettes because they felt it's intellectual. And drank coffee. Um, no, young people aren't the worst, but they are sometimes. <laughs> Cigarette butts, coffee cups, stupid couch. You had to clean it all up, and you did. So congratulations to you. Case solved. Did I ever catch them? No, you didn't have time for that. These notes show that you have what is called a real goddamn job. You don't have time to be chasing down the couch assholes. You have a real job to do. What next? Not uh, much has changed in... Well, uh, read the other one at another time. So, I believe I've got two skill points again, so we could do another thought. But none of them I really, I really liked. Rigorous self-critique. Hmm, be a star. Because I was apologising too much. I don't want to lose any empathy for any period of time. If we go to sleep with these in, does that time count? I don't want to lose Savoir Fair either. Hmm. That's about drugs, so I don't know. I'm not too hot on that one either. Uh, I'll save my spaces. Now, I just wanted to go and check this stairwell out. 
And then we'll maybe talk to Roy and then we'll probably just head up to bed, I think. We do need to heal a little bit. I'm not going to talk to Kuno S. <laughs> that will probably be fruitless. Alright, have we been in here before? This must be it. The basement door is weather-worn. The copper nails holding the upholstery in place have turned green from sea air. And there's a knocker shaped like a lion's head. This must be what? This must be the door Everard mentioned. You still need to get the key from Anyana first, though. Oh. Um. Manana, manana. Oh, get the key to the weasel's door from Manana. Yeah, the favor we were doing for him. Oh, okay. Damn it. Yeah, uh, we could go to Everard. The only other thing we can really do at this point. Oh, no, no, no. I said I was going to go to Roy. Let's go to Roy. Hmm. Can we sit down for a bit? It is the dead of night. Now is not the time for sitting, but for sleeping. It is time to find a bed. Fair enough. Let's see if there's anything down here. Is Sealeng still here? Nope. What is this? Scribbled between the thighs of a page three girl. Lorigny di Disco. What a sign down. Right, let's go see if Roy's got anything for us. So he's probably going to be away, right? We can maybe sell some stuff. There's probably some clothes we could sell, right, that I'm never going to use. Besides, it's best to keep all of them, right? I don't know if we have an inventory maximum or something. There were some things I've not looked at in here, right? Or am I wrong? There's tape equipment. The boom boxes on the shelf look well loved and well traveled. Chipped, dented, they stare at you with the unblinking eyes of their tape reels. Yeah, we need some music for something, right? Let's stand on our toes and see more. One especially catches your eye. Deep gold and amber plastic with a big old handle on top. A classic boom box that says Stereo 8 approved. This is you. Gold and orange. A sunset suite. Just make sure it works before you buy it. Okay. Shopkeep, this stereo weight approved machine here. What I really want to know is, could this device come handy in my police work? Are you sure this is all in working order? Absolutely. I've tested each one myself with recordings of speech, found sounds and music from a variety of genres. Even though, I don't really like music. Okay, Roy. Uh, this machine here. Is the Harman Welsh W2. Made in Vespa, designed in Seoul, plays all reel-to-reel -reel format, 2mm, 8mm, 12mm. It's even got a little radio in there. It'll set you back 12 real. Would this help me in my police work? If police work means playing tapes, sure. You can use it for that, or any other time you'd need to play a tape. Okay, we can sell some stuff. We've got some stuff to sell, Roy. Greetings on this fine night. What brings you here? Oh, I forgot about this. If is Roy high, and if yes, then what's he on? We can boost this, right? Let's let's sure. sell. Let me have a look. Uh, I'll check my pockets. Anything else you're thinking of selling? It 
So I think we can sell the post post quads postcards. Conf quite confidently, right? Yeah, we'll get rid of this. Boogie Street 46. We need this for a quest. Don't think we've got enough really to to sell, right? We could sell the the rifle, but it might come in handy at some point. Uh, I have a fascinating photo of a corpse here. Oh, no. I don't like those kinds of objects. No sale. He barely even looks at it. Do you know what the tattoos mean? A photic path, counter radiance network, anti magnetism. It's darkness. That's all I know. Sell me something lighter. My clothes. I'm not purchasing any more clothing at the oh. moment. He looks you up and down quickly. And especially that tie. It swallows photons around it. I have no need for necrotic objects. Suddenly his gaze fixes on your tie. He steps back from the glass. Your mother is a necrotic object. I'm fun. Hmm? Look at me sparkling in the light of the projector. I've got nothing else to sell. Another time, perhaps. The strange tie incident. Okay, let's uh, get, oh crap, what What did we need? Electrochemistry. Man, these gloves look so much better. It's all about not missing dice rolls. on this fine night what brings you here oh we got one from the oh no let's, let's do it what are you uh, what are you high on Roy feeling warm and enthralled by the movement of light while the mind continues to race forward lucky bastard he's probably on Parolidon it's tough to come by on the street Holodon, what's that? A drug developed by the military to treat and prevent radiation sickness. It has psychedelic side effects and it makes your eyes turn yellow. Is it just me or is it really warm in here? Look around. Sir, could you take off your sunglasses? I'd like to check your eyes. That seems a bit weird. Go straight to the point. So where does a man get pro-Holodon these days? Let's go straight to the point. How would I know? He takes a step back, studying you. There's a note of indignation in his voice. Interesting. Those triangle patches on his vest. You have a feeling they mean something. Like they're similar to the halogen rectangle on your jacket. Uh, what's with the triangles on your vest? It's pretty obvious you're under the influence, sir. No judgement, just curious. I probably did loads of a holodon before I lost my memory. Chill out, man. I'm a... I'm a chill out cop who just wants some of what you're having. Let's just talk about his clothes. I was. I was with the emergency relief brigade. You know, after the people's pile disaster. <laughs> he coughs as if to mark his words. I had to take Perolodon for radiation sickness. Oh. That's what you were hinting at just now, wasn't it? Why? How did you end up with radiation sickness? He's taken for mental and emotional. Not physical pain these days. Uh, what's the people's pile? A bad idea. Some poor leftist built a particle decay generator in hopes of bringing affordable electricity to underserved communities. It malfunctioned. Radioactive waste everywhere. Probably some of it in you too. Hmm. So what's the emergency relief brigade? How were you involved? We were an all-volunteer force. Self-organized. Tried to help the fire brigades contain the spill. He points at the white triangle on his orange safety jacket. On the patch, gamma radiation lines crossed with a red drop of blood. 
I lived by the river since I was a small boy. The Esperance didn't have the art to let it all go to shit without trying to do something to help out. Fair enough, Ray. There wasn't much the volunteer force could do, however. We wasted years in the river mud. Years getting sick. He looks at the spiralling light and stops. It must have been tough. There's a reason why everyone's tried to forget any of it ever happened. And why no one has tried to repair or replace the pile. So much disappointment. An early death. Cancer mostly. And we knew all that was coming even as we were cleaning up as best we could. Whose fault was it that the generator failed? No one's. Everyone's. He sighs and shakes his head. It's just a bad idea in general then. So much bitterness. A bunch of poor people built themselves a primitive nuclear reactor. Hoping for the best. What do you think is going to happen? And how did you end up here? The cleanup happened 15 years ago. I was young then. Later, my second aunt died. Left me this shack and all the assorted junk in it. So I came to Martinez. People told me don't go there. It's a shithole. I said, people, we just had a nuclear pile meltdown. <laughs> I'm going to get as far away from Forberg as I can. Still in the same city, but... He shrugs. Thanks for telling me, Roy. I like the theory more than the story. Outward movement, not vortices. Yeah, you got to get in on those vortices, my man. Care to share the Proholodon? Have you tried it before? It's almost like he's worried for you. I don't think so. If you say so, here you go, man. He presents a large cap-shaped object, object on the palm of his hand, very odd looking. Yes, darling. That's the coalition government ordained Parolidon. Straight into your gut. Cheers. Of course. Thanks, Roy. Sweet, we just got some drugs. <laughs> uh, substance use effects. Plus one psyche, minus one health. Okay. How do we use it? I'm not, I don't think I'm going to just yet. I don't really, I don't think it's the right time for it. Okay, so we spoke to Roy. Um, we could go and try and speak to Everett. Or, you know, just get in there and see if there's anything else going on there. Uh, we need to sort our clothes out, though, I just realised. Let's get our other clothes back on. Um, I quite liked having conceptualization after all that talk about um, about the pail. We've got the vest on. We need the black trousers for the composure. And I want the interfacing gloves. We look horrendous, right? Right, let's go and head into the, the, the harbour or whatever it is, the docks. And see if there's anyone else there, anyone new to talk to. Is it locked? No. Excellent. I was thinking that there might have been, might, you know, we were going to have a pretty busy nightlife or something, but I guess not. The only thing we've not done is get through that door at the back of the Whirling in Rags, right? Hmm. All right, let's head down here, see... Auto save. A composite eye of halogen lights watches you, emitting a low buzz. Uh, what did we need to get in this? You're back before the cargo container. Its draw has not lessened since you were last here. 
If anything, it seems to have grown slightly. Hey there, sugar. The container door appears unmoved by your attempt at flattery. A tough nut to crack for sure, but the strongest containers often have the softest hearts. You're a fine piece of engineering. Do you know that? Come on, don't shut me out. Let me in. It's just another day, another cop, and another container. You're a fine piece of engineering. Do you know that? The door does not respond to your advances. Is it possible that it seems somehow more Damn closed it. than before? Why does this situation feel so familiar? Do you have a history of proposition in inanimate objects? Uh, I don't think we have any clothes that benefit rhetoric, right? No, no, no. No, we do, I mean, we do have two points, so we could put one point in, but I don't think that's going to make a massive difference, right? Um, I don't think it's worth it, is it? Not just yet. I will seduce you, container. Just not quite yet. Those are words I thought I'd never say, right? Nothing else up here. Is the moustache fellow still here? Hello there. You got anything new to tell me? Oh, hey, mister. I knew you'd be back to talk with old Leo here. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. It's like Larry Lariche said when she opened a bathhouse in the basement of my apartment building. It can only get so far before they're aching to get back. And a lot of folks really did keep coming back. Leo, Leo, in the future, can we keep this greeting shorter? <laughs> I had some questions for you, if, it's that not, if that's not too much trouble. No trouble at all, mister. No trouble at all. Damn it. All right, no, you've got nothing new to say. Maybe um, Everard has. Um, and then after this, I think we're just going to hit the sack. What was that? Oh, his office is empty. Look, something forgotten on the coffee table. Nothing's showing up. Oh, maybe we can pilfer. Oh, really, dude? Can't search his desk or something? Oh, that's so disappointing. That's so disappointing. His desk's right there. Could we not just search through all his <laughs> personal information? All right, fine, fine, fine. Off we go. I'll be back, container. You will not deny me this embrace. <laughs> Alright, let's head back in. Uh, I'll knock on Clashy's door one more time, but uh, other than that, I don't think there's anything else we can do. I have no idea how to get to this balcony unless it's through the door at the back of the kitchen, right? It's the only thing I can think of. Hmm. Now, how much money have we got now? Hey, we needed 12 to buy that tape player, 15 to buy the palm pants um, let's just have a look in the freak shop it, there's no way she's still here no it's locked mm, I, I, I wonder how you get to the 
to that upper balcony unless it's through Clashy's apartment. Maybe it is. I don't think there'll be anyone here, right? Once it's 2 a.m. Karaoke. Uh oh. What's happened here? The tomatoes are so thinly sliced you can see through them. Any chance I can sing karaoke, you miserable man? Can I help you? Another, Another thing. thing. Great. I love those. Yes. Never mind. Right, we're off. Get some sleep, wait for Kimmy. Have another nightmare, talk to our lizard brain. <laughs> right? Uh, let's unequip that. The door is closed. Let's knock again. Still nothing. Damn it. Excellent. Right. Were there any other checks left here? A mirror hangs on the bathroom wall. It's barely covered in steam anymore. It's your face in the mirror, adorned with the expression. Uh, so we've got a lot of stuff that boosts electrochem, so... Let's just put all of this stuff back on. I thought we had something else. I don't think it really boosts the mirror the hangs on the bathroom wall. It's barely covered in steam anymore. Oh, no, the origin. It's your face in the mirror, adorned with the expression. 8%. Never mind. All right. Gloves back on. Black jeans back on. And we're set. Right. See what nightmares are waiting. It's still cold from the broken window. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Time to go to sleep. The bed is still cold from the wind blowing in from the broken window. The mattress creaks as you close your eyes and try your hardest to fall asleep. <laughs> Here we are again, my broken bird. The waves are coming, carrying you away. But you can't go. No. You have to stay always half aware of yourself. You're not cooperating, brother man. Why? It's your disgusting body. Even through your sleep, you feel a vague discomfort suffusing it. Your belly and your sides are unpleasantly tender. You wish you could curl up into a fetal ball of safety, but you cannot because of the pain. Every cell in your body is moaning in agony, asking, what did we ever do to you? I'm sorry, cells. It's all me. It's my fault. It's all the system's fault. The system failed me. This body is worthless anyway. No one does anything nice to it. It's my fault. Now, you're finally thinking about something other than yourself. Let's see how far that'll get you. These are my just desserts. I will endure this pain with dignity. Hey, what is this? I was on the express to zero home. I'm an artist and liver damage is my art. I think I need medical attention. I will endure this pain with dignity. There's no dignity here. 
Only reflections of your body mass. Flashes of the day. You keep coming back to yourself in the mirror. But why? To admire all your accomplishments? So being such a cynic reptilian brain. You're just stuck here. In the half world. Could try looking at other people. Really looking. But why would you want to start doing that? Just after all that talk about the pale. And now you're saying we're stuck in the half world. It makes it sound like we're in purgatory, right? Just get me out of here then. Back to the other place. I will. I'm looking at people all the time. I like them. Human beings will always betray you. Just get me out of here. Back to the other place. Oh, baby boy. You're already in the other place. There's no nourishment for you tonight. Maybe tomorrow. Maybe if you weren't so hard on yourself. What do you think you're doing right now? Coming to some greater awareness? Look at all these lights blinking in and out of existence. Thoughts! You're just pretending that you're asleep. Even to yourself. While the world goes on without you. Let it. Let it. But it never seems to let you go, does it? Time to rise and wipe that shining sweat off as best you can. Gather your bearings. Rock and roll. It won't let me go. Wednesday, day three. Sleeping in the marigolds again. All right, anything changed in the apartment? No. Morning, Kimmy. You've already gone downstairs, I imagine. Clashy. The door is closed. Still nothing. Still nothing. This door can only be opened with a key or from... Hmm. How do we get to that balcony? Hmm. Okay, Kimmy. I've been up to no good, and I'll tell you nothing of it. Uh-oh. Who are these people? Oh yeah, we've got the, the, the people to speak speak to. The woman in an RCM patrol officer's uniform winces as she notices you. <laughs> I would really prefer not to talk to you right now. Why? A patrol officer is the lowest rank in the RCM, below lieutenant and sergeant. Hold on, you're a patrol officer of the RCM. I'm on a mur murder investigation. Are you the cavalry? Is everything all right? Why don't you want to talk to me? You're a patrol officer. Yes, I am. And I'm a cop as well. I know. Here's the real deal. Um, are you here to help? I'm definitely not the cavalry. Why don't you want to talk to me? I don't know. I mean, uh, why would I want to talk to you? She's still avoiding your gaze. Have I wronged you? I've done that to a lot of people. It's cool to see another cop. I thought Kim and I were the only ones. God, I don't know why. I'm just trying to do my best. Let's just do this by the book, okay? Why? I bring the word... I bring the word of the end to come. I mean, even if we bring this up, she's not going to tell us. Let's just do this by the book, all right? By the... She pinches the root of her nose. Something changes in her. 
It's pity. Pity comes over her. Okay, fine. Let's talk. What did you want? What? What precinct are you from? What precinct? She just sighs. Am I from? God, he doesn't know. <laughs> Fucking deranged lunatic. The sunglasses wearing man push, pushes through his teeth. I've done something to her then. You're the police, right? Cool. I don't... I don't know what to say. So we've spoken to her before. Don't say anything, Judith. What are you, the police, doing here? I'm just looking out for... You? No one. I'm just a man with sunglasses. And you are... Say nothing. I just want to do my job. That's all. She says quietly and looks away. I don't know, maybe we've had some sort of involvement with her. Something about the man with sunglasses and you. The energy between you two is making her uncomfortable. You look like shit. Your ruffled face reflects in the man's sunglasses. And I don't mean that as a metaphor. You look like shit, arsehole. I don't look like shit. I know, it's intentional. The last couple of days have been rough. Looks don't matter. It's what's on the inside that counts. I'm never going to get this case solved. It's been a rough few days, buddy. Oh, don't be so modest. We're looking at several months worth of damage here. Kind of a miracle you're still up and at it, to be honest. <sighs> oh, come on, Jean. It looks like it's been a rough week on him. The woman next to him sighs. She, she's got a lot of sympathy for us. Maybe... Hey, there's a smoking guy. Maybe we were involved with her at some point. It's not just this week. What do you want? He scans you from head to toe. Okay, so this guy is cool. He stands there like a statue. An angry statue. And he does not like you. No. Don't even try to win him over. He won't. Hmm. Who is this guy, Kimmy? Mm -mm. I'm not getting involved in this. He shakes his head. It's not my style, he thinks, glancing at the man in sunglasses and the woman beside him. Oh boy, they're mad at him. No wonder. He just doesn't recognize them. See you around then. Watch out for yourself, loser. That voice, so very familiar. Did you hear it when calling to your station and reporting your badge missing? Recognize your voice. Oh, really? I wonder where. I lost my badge recently. When I called in to report it missing, you were there. That's the where you remember me from? Maybe. Okay, then. It's probably a coincidence. People sound alike. Goodbye. Right. Let's bump our esprit de corps. Uh, what else did our esprit de corps? No, no. Just that one then. Again? I can't believe this shit. He shakes his head looking like he is really having trouble believing this shit. He might be wearing a disguise. Come on, dude. 83. There's something strange. Let's figure it out. There's something that binds you to him. Some kind of an outfit, maybe. A uniform. I don't know. Firefighter's uniform. Exacto Mundo. I don't think he's a firefighter. I'm not going to ask that. Um, I don't, I'm not going to ask that. Of course, you don't have to. You can talk about anything you want. I don't want to waste a point on a spree de corps, man. 
already at a six. It's like such a waste, right? But I want to, I want to know what's going on with this dude. He's so mad at us. <laughs> That's what we've got these points saved up for, right? Oh, that's so frustrating that we missed an 83. Yep. Me again. again. He might be wearing a disguise. You know what it is. It's like the two of you know each other. Just ask him. Tell me the truth. Where'd you know me from? Oh, I definitely know you from somewhere. Another life. From another life, then? Yes, from another life. A different life. Maybe the life of a police officer belonging to the ranks of the... He pauses. To what station do you think you would belong in this alternate and totally fictional reality? Sixty-nine. He seems to be observing you through the reflective glass of his eyewear. There's no reply. Perhaps repeat it? Sixty-nine. Repeating it gets no reaction from the man with the sunglasses. Suddenly, the world is very quiet. Even the howling wind outside sounds a bit embarrassed. Ninety-nine million, etc. That's exactly right. Down to a fraction. Sarcasm. I don't even know what to say to that. What is your goddamn station? Um, isn't Kimmy's the 41st? Okay, okay. That's plausible. That's entirely plausible. Now we're really getting somewhere. The man sounds genuinely excited. He gives you a long and meaningful look and adds, Somewhere good. Um, let's talk more about the hypothetical Station 41 you mentioned. Oh, hypothetical 41. Yeah, let's fantasize about that. He blinks aggressively. I'm not busy. You're not busy. Let's just play around. So what would our relationship be in this alternate universe? Let's be crazy. Let's say you and I are partners. How's that for a thought experiment? Oh, it's, yeah, it's the guy who used to be our partner. He's just got a wig on. He's in, he is in a disguise. I remember him. I used him in, I used him in the thumbnail. I recognize him completely now. Yeah. Mm, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I don't know why I didn't clock that. Yeah, Kimmy's cooler than you. I'm sure he's fucking flattered. But Kim is not part of this thought experiment. In this one, we are partners. The lieutenant is silent. You seem like a bit of a drag, to be fair. None taken, my friend. None taken. Let's be honest. There's been some purely fictional talk in our imaginary station in regards of who'd even be worthy of your partnership. And the conclusion is that a man with your caliber should form his own one-man policing unit. Anyone else would just slow you down. And have you got something to solve? Oh, no, no, no. You see, I enjoy watching other better cops solve crimes. And let me tell you, it's been quite a privilege seeing you work. This isn't helping. She says, shaking her head and looking at the man with sunglasses disapprovingly. And who else is in our imaginary police station? You're not going to believe this, but police officers... The man pauses for dramatic effect. Yes, sir. Solving crimes, locking up bad guys, and... And get this, and not getting that drink on at two o'clock. Just some regular boring motherfuckers in suits and uniforms. Nothing spectacularly extravagant like you, the far-out son of Lang. And who's that? Oh. I don't know why it keeps cutting out on the voice. Oh, it's you. You eccentric genius. He winks at you sarcastically. I mean, with your unorthodox approach to police work, it has to be you. Um, tell me more about them. Not even a little bit. It's an urban myth about an officer who is so far undercover he can't remember who he is. 
As I said, just an urban myth. You are not the son of Ler. He's trying to protect you from further rough handling, dished out by the sun-glassed man. I can't imagine it anymore. Neither can I, partner. Neither can I. His great eyes suddenly flash above the glass frames. They feel sad. It's a mere second, but it feels like you saw something. A gram of compassion in that sadness. Yeah, we heard him. We heard. We heard that from him a bit on the radio, right? That about him being our partner and having a little bit of compassion, yet also annoyance towards us. Cool shades. You wearing a disguise? Yes, it's a hobby of mine. He looks at you inquisitively. I've got some questions for you. About what? You don't look like a cop. You know what you look like? Like that guy whose name everyone keeps calling me. Like Guillaume Le... No, you will not start blabbering about that asshole. Now, will you answer some questions for no. me? Don't you have to? No, he doesn't. If I wasn't clinically depressed, I'd burst out <laughs> laughing. But I'm gonna go with no right now. He doesn't look amused. If you don't want to answer questions, maybe you want to hear me say things. Actually, I don't want to hear you say, say things. Come on, Jean. Okay, say things. I he, want to hear you say things. He adopts a lighter tone. Hear that? He wants you to say things. Say one. Suddenly, out of nowhere, Case-related things start popping up in your head. I'm doing an investigation about a hanged man. So, do you know who hanged him? Um, not yet. Yeah, I can see that. Why am I telling you this? I don't know. Why are you? He gives you an odd look. Who knows why we do the things we do? Somehow, bouncing those ideas off the man with sunglasses felt calming, mm. like you've done it before. Oh my god, there's more. You want something more? What is it? Let's talk about him again. Okay, why not? Let's do So, do you know who he I don't know. Oh my oh. god, there's more. See ya. Okay, the man with the sunglasses and his hypothetical Station 41. Weird, right? I know, super weird. I guess it was kind of weird, yeah. Yeah, it was kind of weird. There's something missing here. Something you can't put our finger on. You know what? Just ask him. I know it sounds crazy, and you'll probably get laughed at. But I was still... Think I was thinking the same thing. I should just ask him if we're from the same station. Yes, just cross it off the list. It's probably not true. He's our, he's our former partner. Again? I can't believe this shit. I'm going to say no. Just to see what you'll say to that. What'd you say? Yeah, probably not. I don't remember you from anywhere. Okay. Okay. Jean, he said okay. Give it a rest. Okay. I was clearly wrong. He is a firefighter, male nurse, animal control agent. Something of that kind. Not a cop. Go on with your cop work. Don't let me stop you again. Okay, let's talk to Judith. Yes? What is it? Look, something's really bugging me. Are we or are we not from the same police station? God damn it, you leave her alone. Keep your weird bullshit to yourself and be professional for once, for fuck's sake. The man with the glasses snaps at you. Can I actually help you with something? She looks at you apologetically. Yes, of course. Preposterous. I mean, you would remember if they were, right? Who forgets their squad mates? That's not possible. Are you with him? Of course I'm with him. Why do you ask? <laughs> Nothing, just wondering. The sooner you figure this hanging out, the sooner everyone can go home. Okay. All right, so we've got the the union to talk to, really. Um, Gart's here, obviously. Lena's here. God, everyone's here at the Whirling. So I'm going to talk to the chef. Can you open this door, mate? The man ponders his cooking utensils and gives you a little nod, acknowledging your presence. Do you know what's behind that door? He looks up at you, then 
looks away quickly, shrugging and muttering something to himself. Shrugging is an international sign for, no, I don't know what's behind that door. What's in the borscht? The man says a couple of sentences in that strange language of his and then seems to wait for you to speak. Yes. Hmm. Bors need more vodka? He picks up a bottle from the shelf. Okay, so it's vodka that keeps the men happy and in good spirits. Clever move by the Union. Vodka, Bors! I love it, Bratan! Turn it the fuck up and then ask for some yourself. Turning it up seems like a dangerous idea, honestly. The place is a powder keg. Um. I don't know, man. Let's listen to logic. Sorry, let's listen to logic. The cook gives you a long, disappointed look, then turns the stove off and seems to wait for you to speak. You're friends with Manana. The mention of Manana gets his attention. He smiles and delivers a whole slew of unfamiliar words and lively gestures. Then he falls silent again. They're friends. Cheers, mate. Okay, let's talk to our friend here. Hi, Jandarm. Another rendezvous. There he is again, the smoker on the balcony, right here in the whirling in rags. Hi. Hi, hi. So what brings you here? Um, what are you doing here? Admiring the atmosphere. What about you, officer? I live here, my room's upstairs. This is where I'm going to go down in history. I'm going to sing karaoke. I'm here to kick some ass and solve the case I'm working on. Uh, I'm here to sing karaoke. Really? Well, I look forward to that. He straightens up, curious. He raises a glass to you. Tell me again about that muscular type who came in to investigate the crime. Oh yes, let's see. He knocked on my door a few days after the lynching. I think he was going through the entire building, asking questions. What did you tell him? Nothing. That I didn't see anything. Did he believe you? Why shouldn't he? Did you tell him about... Mr. Bureaucrat. What friend? Your Sunday friend? No, I don't think it came up. What did he look like? Was he big with grey hair? Muscular, handsome, strong, like one of those military types. Was he on his own? Yes, but he was speaking to someone on his earpiece. His earpiece? Yes, you know those tiny speaker microphones that fancy security guards sometimes wear. What was he saying? Just reporting back whatever I was telling him. Is there any other way of recognizing him? Oh, let me think. He had an accent. He sounded like one of those mercenaries. He turns his eyes upwards in recollection. He sounded vaguely Oranese. No, not vaguely. Scratch that. He sounded definitely Oranese. Thanks for the information, dude. Sure. Anything else on your mind? Well, I met you Sunday, friend. You did? And how did you like him? A smile adorns his face. I didn't like him at all. You were right, he was magical. Magically bureaucratic. I didn't like him as much as I like you. I didn't. He was a government official. I don't trust governments. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Why not? He bursts out laughing. Who is he? What are you, you two? Why was he staying at your place in the middle of the night? I don't want to talk about other people. I want to talk about you. God, we're coming across like a, a bit of love admirer here. <laughs> Who is he? A visitor from the first world. He's not like you and me, gendarme. He smiles. He can always return. He smiles, and his smile seems melancholic. Return where? To his opportunities in Occident. Yeah. Sir Leclay. Still. His coming and going brings some life to the village. He breathes in and keeps his lungs filled for a moment before letting it out. Or is it just money? I don't know. What are you, you two? Friends, I told you. Sunday friends. Friends who like to get together from time to time. And what does that mean? We... Come on, dude. Why are we asking this? <sighs> 
that he won't be there when times get tough, I guess. Is that even a friend? It is. On Sundays. Why was he staying at your place in the middle of the night? He has keys. And he likes the view. To the sea, I mean. Yeah. He waves gently with his cigarette holding hand. I don't want to talk about other people. I want to talk about you. Hmm? What right. about me, Gendarme? Let's try this 50-50-ish. It's the sports. He's a sports guy. All about that physical prowess and athletic skill. Nothing else here. I mean, I've got another point. I mean, composure is quite useful. It's not going to boost it that much, though, is it? Bye -bye, but when's the next time we're going to see him, though? You know? It's not too lightly. Titus, you were told to keep a low profile. Two in the chest and down he goes. The big boss has it covered. Can I get a refill here, please? Hmm. Um. Do we want our esprit de corps for when we talk to the people in there? Hmm. Okay, these gloves are pretty cool, though. Um. Yes, yes, I'm very attractive. Great, thank you. <laughs> oh dear, right, guys. Uh, I think I'm going to leave that episode there. Um. We need to have a big chat with these fellas here. I don't know if we've got the right evidence to talk to them just yet. So, hmm, I'm not sure. But, um, that's what we'll do in the next one. So, yeah, we, um, yeah, we went to speak to Roy. Uh, we had another nightmare after we came back here. We spoke to the people from our, from our station. Our, our, our old partner here is in disguise, very poorly disguised, I must say. But, yeah, we'll pick it up from here next time. We'll talk to Lena again, maybe do that check on composure again. And more importantly, we'll talk to these guys from the union over here and the gardener the gardener so i hope you enjoyed this one guys leave me a, a thumbs up if you did and just remember everybody never trust an on crate i'll see you back in the whirling in rags